All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. I'm going to do a video today on uh, 2019 LSU running 11 personnel duo. Went down a rabbit hole yesterday. We've done uh, in the past, if you follow this channel, you know that we used to run our version of duo. Um, and I've been down this path before, people talking about how it needs to be done. Got into it with a coach yesterday, a friend of mine, and we started discussing it. So I decided to look it up a little bit more, and I'll tell you what I found. All right, make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStride, Sideline Replay Company. We use, if you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, check out GameStride. Dome Hats, a headwear company we use at Bishop Kenny High School and with Play Fast Football. Again, one of my fitted Crusader logo on the front, BK on the back. Completely customizable, different styles, different enclosures, snapback fitted, Velcro, stock hats suck. Make sure you check out Dome Hats. Baker Sporting Goods, company we use for our uh, game night gear, our practice gear, player spirit packs, all right, shirts like this that we wear during practice. Um, you know, you can get your fan gear, your coach's gear, your player's gear. It's a one-stop shop for everything you need. Make sure you check out Baker Sports. Just Play Football, which is the uh, program we use for our playbook stuff and a lot of our meetings. Our uh, playbooks are there. Our installs are in there. Our team meetings are done through their presentation mode. I use it for my Patreon site. Any clinics I'm going to speak at, it's the best play drawing tool on the market. Check out Just Play. At different, uh, sorry, different USA, the ultimate striking machine. Thousands of reps. Don't need a partner. It's just you and a different USA machine. They hook up right to the racks in your weight room, so you can use it in season, off season. It's just you, the machine striking violently. Don't have to worry about injuring another player holding a bag. So make sure you check out Different USA. And then if you're interested in any of the virtual clinics we did last year, uh, you can. Email me sting eight seven four zero at gmail dot com. I'll tell you what we have. We've got. Uh, a couple of tight front clinics that we did, a split field clinic, a Blitz family clinic, Atavis did a tackling clinic for us, Noma Zone did a practice game planning clinic for us, we have a screen game clinic, an offensive line uh, clinic, and then we also have a defensive clinic from Colgate defensive coordinator Jordan Belfiore and then another local high school coach here did a clinic for us on drills, taking drills from practice to games, things that show up in games, learning how to turn those into drills that you can use at practice. So if you're interested in any of that, Sting8740 at gmail.com. I'll let you know, all right, how you can get your hands on that. And then next year we'll be starting some virtual clinics up again. So if you want any speakers in particular, anybody you want to hear, any topics you want to hear about it, let me know. All right, so if you follow this channel, if you watch the things we've done over the last 10 years, you'll know that we used to be a duo team. In my opinion, it is a perfect complement to gap schemes. It ties right into the gap scheme world. It's basically power without a puller, all right, and it... You know, the only main difference in your gap scheme stuff is you are now departing to front side backers as opposed to back side backers. So that's the one slight change wrinkle that you got to make on the front side. If you're doubling a three technique instead of going to a back side backer, you're going to a front side backer. So it ties right in with your gap schemes. A lot of guys talk all the time about, well, I don't like our, our linemen pulling. We don't have linemen that can pull. We, I don't have guys that can kick out. I don't have guys that can pull and wrap. Duo scheme is a perfect scheme for you if you don't like guys pulling because you don't need to use your alignment as pullers. I'll show you how you can put some other bodies in there and, and what some people are doing to use other bodies to get similar schemes to your traditional gap schemes, right? So it ties right into the gap scheme world. If you don't want to carry, I never wanted to carry zone schemes and gap schemes. I didn't feel like we had enough time in high school. I thought it was a lot of pressure on the offensive line coach to be able to carry both schemes with the techniques that are needed. So we always carried our version of the duo play. Now, some people would say it was more of the zeer, you know, the zone veer type deal, maybe going back to the Nevada days with Colin Kaepernick. To me, duo is the blocking scheme. It's power without a puller, all right? It's a gap down blocking scheme. Now, the other thing that people are going to tell you all the time when you talk duo is it's got to be run with big bodies. It's got to be run from bunch sets. It's got to be run from compressed sets, right? So everybody will tell you that if you're going to run duo, it's got to be run from the compressed sets, right? It's gotta be run with multiple tight ends. It's gotta be run with big bodies. Now, in the NFL, maybe major college football, a lot of teams that carry duo schemes, yes, it is used with big personnel. Yes, it, it is used with a lot of big bodies. The NFL scheme is get those big bodies in, compress everything down, get the, the angles and leverage that you need, leave corners unblocked, make corners tackle people. Yes, that's probably traditionally the way that it's used. But in doing more research, we used to run it all the time. I even carried it as, as a read scheme, and people will tell you that with a front side A-gap entry, it can't be carried as a read play because the surf player or 
you know, the ball carrier is too close to a guy that can play both the ball carrier and the quarterback. Inside zone has an entry that's the opposite A gap or the other side of the center. So that can be a read play, but you can't carry do as a duo as a replay. We carried it as a, as a replay. How do we do that? We try to manipulate where the five technique was or where the read was based on, you know, the fact that we had an A gap entry point. So we would smart split our alignment based on that, whether there was a three technique or a shade to that side. Our lineman knew how to smart split to get the five technique further removed. But today we're not talking about it as a read play. Today we're going to talk about it from what I researched and found film on in the way we used to run it, all right, is running it from true 11 personnel sets like this one right here. There's not a bunch of big bodies inside. It's not compressed. It's not bunch. It's not cluster, whatever you want to call those sets. It is run from traditional 11 personnel. And the thing that you're trying to do is you're trying to get six-on-six six blocking schemes that you like, right? If you listen to any of the great offensive coordinators in the college game, the good offensive minds, they're always going to talk about six-on-six six and all of their RPO schemes within the six-on-six. Six. If you talk to, or if you listen to Joe Moorhead talk and Lincoln Riley talk and, you know, uh, Chip Kelly and guys, it's always about finding runs that you like that can match box numbers, right? So if you are an 11 personnel team and you are twins open, two by one, 11 personnel, the thing that you can guarantee a lot of times is you're going to see a lot of six-man boxes because of the picture you present. As soon as you take guys and, and you play bigger bodies and you personnel them in and you come into these more 12 personnel, bunch sets, things like that, you're going to add bodies to the picture. You're going to add bodies to the box. If you're 11 personnel and you're good at what you do, you're going to get people into the looks that you want to get them into so that you can now carry your six-on-six -six runs, right? So duo is perfect for those six on six schemes. And then you can attach all of your RPO game and your tempo tools like access and gift throws. All right, and I'm gonna show you some of the main ones that LSU was using. I mean, they were so simple with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and, and, and Justin Jefferson. They had elite, uh, elite talent, right? They had a good offensive line. They had uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire as the running back. Yes, they were a very talented football team, but the scheme itself was so simple and it was done a, a, a lot of the time from this open 11 personnel set. Yes, they condensed it. Yes, you'll have film of them doing it, but they didn't get into all these big personnel groups. A lot of times when they clustered it or bunched it, it was the same personnel. Okay, so what they were doing is they were running the traditional duo scheme, right? So you had the front side double on the three, climb into the mic, the back side double on the shade, climb into the will. Backside base block, don't need to be a dry block, doesn't need to be a great player at the backside tackle, just don't get beat across your face. And then they're using a the tight end for what I've heard people call like the Broadway block. All right, all eyes are on you, everybody's watching you with that block. But when you listen to more duo people from 11 personnel talk about it, it doesn't have to be a tremendous block. It's got to be more of a body on a body. All right, you don't necessarily have to kick that guy out because the ball can do different things because we're going to try and over, we're going to try and read or RPO overhang players, right? So you just need a body, somebody that can put a body on a body. And then the technique of the defensive end is really going to tell you the block that you need. If they're a hard squeeze fill team, all right, then you're probably going to end up having to wash that down and those runs are going to bounce a bunch. Now, that's when people like to constrict the sets, get condensed, get, you know, get guys bunched in tight because you can block those inside backers. Here, the overhang running a little bit, all right, I'm sorry, the inside backer running a little bit over the top, scraping, might give you a little bit of an issue if the end's a squeeze player and you're forced to block everything down and the back has to, all right, bounce to the outside because when you're running duo, the back is going to read the front side inside backer, okay? If the front side inside backer is a plug player, then the ball is naturally going to keep its course in the C gap there. All right, if the inside backer is, an, is a scrape player, okay, you're creating leverage on the block. So now when they come off on this double team, if the inside backer is a scrape player, then the ball naturally wants to stay front side in the A gap. Okay, so that is one issue that you have to worry about. If you get a hard squeeze spill or a guy that you have to block down and you can't get anybody over the top, all right, for the scrape exchange player, that's going to be a little bit of an issue, but there are some things you can do to alleviate that as well. But what they were doing is they were carrying this scheme, all right, and then they carried it with a, a bunch of different RPOs to the front side, okay, where they gave, obviously, they've got Joe Burrow, they've got Justin Jefferson, they've got Jamar Chase. It's the best of both worlds, all right? So they carried this scheme, and they carried it with glance to two and fin to number one, and they always had some type of access deal 
going on to the backside. So if at any time they didn't like the box, they didn't like the numbers, they always had access to the backside. Right? This is a six on six scheme. You're trying to get six of your guys on six of their guys, block it up, all right, and, and now throw off of the seventh and eighth player, right? The overhang, the weak side overhang. Where are they? Can they make plays? It is the most traditional, simplest RPO tempo style of offense that is out there. Okay, the blocking scheme is simple. Now, people will tell you, you've got to be big and physical up front. You've got to be able to move people off the ball. Move people off the ball. Well, yeah, in, in most runs, you've got to be able to block people and move them off the ball. All right, if you're, our, our guys are undersized, we don't think we can run that scheme. Well, there's only one or two schemes maybe in the world you can run if you're undersized and you don't like all right, the physicality of your offensive lineman. Either you're going to be wing T and give them leverage and angles, all right, or a single wing or something else. There's not a lot of schemes you can run if you don't like the physicality of your offensive lineman. It is what it is. It's the nature of the beast. Okay, this way at least we're trying to guarantee two double teams at the point of attack if we can get them. All right, we're trying to guarantee that we can get in high school, like the big time guys in college, they'll talk about we want to put 600 pounds on 300 pounds. Okay, well at least in high school maybe we can put 400 pounds on 300 pounds, all right? It's better than 190 on 300. Okay, so we're still going to get double teams at the point of attack. We're trying to get two double teams, and then we're just manipulating the picture outside of all that so that if we get the right looks that we can block in the box, we can throw off the extra defenders. So they would carry glance to two, fin to one. Okay. Interesting, which a bunch of people do, but I like, I like the theory. They would carry slot fade. Uh, all right. And the reason they carry slot fade is when you got a loaded box and you got man coverage or you got man free or you got one high, they had a, they, they had a, a man beater or a one high beater built into the RPO by carrying slot fade. All right, they also carried on the front side vert with the rollout. All right, all things that you can watch on YouTube. You can go back and search 2019 LSU duo clips. A bunch of people put stuff out there. You can find it. All right, so they had their front side RPOs. And then what they would do is they would put the, the Y on the backside. All right, so they, they put the Y on the backside and get into more of a two by two instead of a three by one look. All right, usually the back would be on that side there. And now they would come back and they would run it the other way. All right, so now you would get base block here, base block there. All right, don't let them cross your face. Doesn't have to be a dominant block. Try and get the double on the nose. Center always goes to backside backer in a traditional scheme. And now you can kind of sift or be really heavy, all right, through the inside B-gap with the tackle, but also, all right, cognizant of possibly working the double with the tackle and the tight end to the wheel. Now, if you want to climb the tackle straight to the wheel, you can do that, depending on who your Y is or what you like, but you could also seal the inside first, use the sift technique and the B-gap, all right, but still have presence with the end there so that you can help the tight end and you can get some movement and work a double there. Now the RPOs are happening to the single side. They carried your traditional glance. They carried speed out there, all right? And then on this side, they run some type of screen action for the access throws, right? It could be anything. It could be bubble to two. It could be stand up, all right? Now the one with that block there. You can run access throws out here where you give these guys routes that they can run, all right? So you can give these guys versus off coverage the ability to run, all right? Hitches or whatever you want. Back is there. The read now becomes the will linebacker. All right, so it was very simple in the scheme itself, and it was done out of true 11 personnel. It was a duo scheme from 11 personnel with people removed, right? The one thing that a lot of guys tell you you can't do, you shouldn't do. If you want to run duo, you got to be big bodies. you got to be multiple tight ends, all right? I've never believed that. I still don't believe it to this day. I think the scheme has a ton of value and can still be carried to this day, all right? The other beautiful thing about the scheme is... With your movement guys, if you're a, sh a, a shift trade motion formational guy, your movement guy, wherever you want to put them, your movement guy can now be the guy that's getting into the looks you need to get them into coming from different pictures. So you're pre presenting different pictures with your movement guy, and then you're bringing them back in where you want to bring them into. So you show them some 10 personnel, 3 by one 2 by 2 and then your movement guy gets back to where you need them on either side to run the duo play. Okay? Now, to me, the interesting thing off of this scheme was always the fact that with a few simple tags, all right, with a few simple tags within this scheme, we could still maintain six-on-six six runs that we absolutely loved, and we could get to different theories of plays within the same scheme. 
Now, as, a, as an offensive coach, what I always liked is when I could get to other plays that were same as mentality, where I was actually teaching a different play, but the kids didn't know I was teaching a different play because they were just tags off the same play. Okay? So, you know, one of the things you could do to make this an isolation play is you could keep your same rules on the back side, you could base the front side or fan the front side, insert, and carry all your same RPOs. It's still six on six, and now you're going with an insert. If you, if you feel like you can't move the three technique, you don't like the block or the Y on the, on the tight end. I'm sorry, on the defensive end, the five technique, all right? You're getting, you're getting your ass kicked there. Base it with your guard and your tackle on a three and a five or the shade and a five and insert inside, throw all the same RPOs, okay? You can go with kind of what, what I call the crunch theory, all right? In, in the terminology that I would use, crunch would tell me that we are going to block an inside defender on the same side of the play, all right? We're not going across. When I go across the center, to me, I consider it more of a wham play. So crunch to me would be the first defensive lineman front side. So now we're going to base the tackle, climb the guard, and block the three technique down inside with the Y. Why would you do that? The three technique is a guy who's a spill player. He's a hard chase player uh, off of down blocks, right? So if you get a three technique and the guard blocks down, he's constantly moving his way inside with the guard. He's not a straight up the field player, right? Well, if he's going to squeeze, if we block the guard and the guard tries to climb and he takes air out of that by squeezing it, he's already moving inside. Now we can pin him inside and we can get the ball to go back behind him there, right? So you can carry that theory. You can trap it. Okay, you can trap it and bring the sniffer to the other side now, right? So now you can get, looks a little bit like a split zone version in a way. Now you can trap it, and on this side, you can lock the tackle, climb the guard and the center, or work the center to the three technique to get to the mic, leave the backside shade, trap the backside shade, all right, and try and get the ball run up in there. Now, when I ran the, the, the wham play, I always liked to wham the three technique because I thought the running lane was better. I didn't always like whamming a shade or a two-eye unless he was such a player that was so far up the field, all right, and so reckless up the field that it was an easier block and we could get the lane that we wanted to, all right? If you wanted to run that theory, then maybe you could get the back to enter front side, all right? If you like the angles better, maybe you could get the back to enter front side and take it inside the wham block there. That's completely up to you. You're still going to carry all the same RPOs. You're still going to carry the access theories. All right. You're still going to carry all the same deals off of that play. So you get the insert tag, you get the wham tag. All right. You get the insert tag, you get the wham tag, you get everything that you want off of one blocking scheme. All right. We also carry the flat theory. All right. If you listen to you know, if you listen to, to Joe Moorhead talk about some of his RPOs, he constantly talks about the tight end. Tight end, you can block them, you can flat them, you can bluff them. Well, you get all the same theories to me in the duo world. So if you didn't like the fact that duo was a replay with a quarterback run, and you didn't feel like with the front side entry, right? So if, if the running back is front side in the A-gap, and you feel like the surf player, all right, the surf player can handle that, Again, if you were running zone, the entry point would be more over here. That's why people feel like they can run, all right, inside zone and read it. The duo play with the entry point being front side A gap, people don't feel like you can read it. Well, one of the ways we would run the read concept is we'd block normal duo, and then we would run the flat RPO theory. So we would go there with number three to the flat. Now if the five technique can play the back, we throw the ball to the flat, all right? If the... Five technique can't play the back, we can still give it now. All right, so it doesn't become quarterback pull, it becomes the flat RPO theory. Okay, we also, off the insert look, so like, like uh, Coach Moorhead would say, we also bluff them, right? So we would run hitch out here, smash concept here, all right? We would lock the front side, read the mic, and we would run bluff with the sniffer down the middle versus middle of the field open teams off the same blocking scheme. So now it's lock, lock, double, backside base block, duo scheme, front side A gap, make the A gap fitter in the middle of the field open who might be a three vertical player, make him fit vertical and defend three vertical. 
All right, sorry, make him fit A gaps and defend three vertical. All right, so you've got your base duo scheme. You can run it from 11 personnel. If you don't think it's a replay for quarterback runs, that's fine. That's your argument. I carried it. We did it. If you don't think it's possible, you don't have to do it. But you can run all your RPOs, all your six-on-six six theories. All right, and if there's anybody out there that tells you that true duo has to be run with bunch condensed clustered sets, multiple tight ends on the field, go back and watch. Watch 2019 LSU do it, national champions. Watch them do it from base 11 personnel, three by one looks, two by two looks, tight end, Y off the ball. Watch them carry that scheme with their RPOs and their access throws, all right? And don't let anybody tell you what something has to be, okay? Yes, maybe it was meant to be with these bodies on the field, and it was meant to be run a certain way at the big time level. You can take any scheme you want and you can wrinkle it however you want, all right? And you can make it fit what you need it to fit. So if you're looking for a simple scheme that marries with gap schemes, a simple scheme with tags that can get you to multiple runs, where you can wham or trap guys, all right? You can insert guys and become ISO theories. If you're looking for a very functional scheme with multiplicity that is really simple and easy to teach, duo might be the way to go. If you don't think you can move people off the ball, you're not physical enough, you don't want to carry it, completely up to you. At the end of the day, you carry the schemes that you need to carry that you want to carry, all right? But to me, we had success running this play. We ran it as a read play, and we had success running it as a read play. Maybe not as good as zone read. That's a different argument for a different day. You can do it. You can design anything you want, and you can call it whatever you want. To me, it's duo. We're blocking it the same way. All right? Now, the, the confirmation for me that, could, that it could be done was I had a, uh, a player of mine that is now playing at Liberty University, and I took him on his official visit up there when Hugh Freeze was there, and... I got a chance to sit in meetings and watch practice, and at that time, I thought we were running Zier. I called it Zier, right? That's what I thought we were doing. They were running a duo play, and they were explaining it as duo, and I looked at it and I said, we run that play right now. You know, what is this duo play? And the offense coordinator and the O-line coach drew it on the board, and I said, well, man, we do that right now. We just don't call it duo. Where does duo come from? Well, it's NFL scheme. You get two double teams at the point of attack, whether it's under or over. You, you're, it's power without a puller. All right, so that's the first time that I kind of got confirmation of it was I traveled to a college. I looked at them running it. I said, man, we run that same play. We just don't call it that. All right, and then when you go back and watch 2019 LSU, there's confirmation out there. Alabama would run it at times from, from similar looks. College teams have run it at times. Maybe it's a different way in the NFL. To me, you can still do it. You can wrinkle it. You can make it fit your offense in high school. All right, so remember, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. All right, turn on your notifications. You know every time we do a video like this or we go on YouTube Live, you'll get the notification. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like the video or don't like the video. If you're one of those people that think duo needs to be run a certain way with certain body types on the field, that is your opinion. You can leave a comment. You can tell me whatever you want. You can give this video a thumbs down. That is your opinion. You have the right to watch the video. You have the right to not watch the video. You have the right to leave thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever comment you want. If you leave a comment, I'll try to respond to you. Uh, if it's a comment about the duo, duo play, how we tried to run it, what the mesh point looked like, what did it look like, you know, what does the tailbacks read exactly, what are you trying to do, how do you work the double teams, any comments you want to leave, I respond to every comment that I can get to. So if I see the comment on my end, I'll make sure that I respond. All right, remember, if you want any of the virtual clinics we've done, email me, sting8740 at gmail.com. If your season's over, hopefully the off season's going great. If you're still playing, good luck to you. Go get that state title. All right, hopefully your season ends with a win because 95% of seasons end with losses. So if you're still playing, good luck to you. All right, I appreciate everything you guys do for me and play fast. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I will see you guys next time.